My name is Patricia Rodriguez. I work in publishing. I'm an operations manager here. Um, I used to be part of the choir in Our Lady Queen of Angels Church, and now I run the service here on the sidewalk. In this neighborhood, who lives here? It is a great big mixture of everyone. Um, we have a lot of poor. We have a lot of uh, minority, more minority than, than not. Um, the, this church in particular was right in the heart of these projects, which, you know, I guess by definition is for the poor or the low income. And so it was almost a beacon in the middle of here. And, and now it's closed. Many of us have been parishioners of the church for many, many years. I myself had been a parishioner for about 25 years at the time that the church was closed. Um, we had been advised that there was an idea that they were going to close the church, so we put together a plan to try to make the church self-sufficient and so that we'd need no support from the archdiocese. And we took that plan to a meeting and it was not even looked at. Uh, we were told at that time that they wanted to know more about our emotional connection with the church as opposed to the financial connection because we did come up with a plan where we would need no help. So we spoke and they made the decision to close the church anyway. We would, they had a date in March that they were going to close the church. We had decided that as long as somebody stayed in the church, they wouldn't close it. So um, February, I believe it was the 10th, we decided to stay in the church. So that Sunday after Mass, we basically had a, a schedule as to who would be in the church when. Some of us had to go to work, so after work we came. Um, it just happens that Tuesday, it was I was scheduled to be in the church, and um, I went home. You know, had dinner, went to church, and we just we stayed in the church for about two days. That night, they decided enough was enough, and they called the police. The archdiocese did, and they had. Um, well, they were going to arrest everyone that was in the church that would not leave for trespassing. Many of those in this community are either elderly, need medication, or maybe undocumented, so they, they couldn't allow themselves to stay in the church and be arrested, so six of us were arrested. Um, they eventually dropped the charges of trespassing. We were kind of looking forward to, to go, you know, to have our day in court because all we were doing was fighting for our church, for our place of worship, and the place where that was our second home. We basically, you know, helped to maintain it financially. Margarita was just saying that she used to clean the church, she used to decorate it for, for different celebrations that they had. So it was our home away from home, and that's what we were doing, fighting to, fighting to keep it. Well, once they closed the church, Carmen Villegas, who used to spearhead really this whole movement, for lack of a better word. Um, she spoke to many of us and decided we should still have service. We should have service. It started out being a sort of protest against the closing of the church, but it's grown into much more than that. We've been here having service on the sidewalk for, we just determined that February will be 10 years. And um, we know that they know we're here and they hear us but they've done no kind of reaching out to us, no effort. We know that the church is still used for um, the kids in the school. And sometimes the nuns, they'll have something in the church and they go in through the back, but we're not invited. Um, so we still, we fight on, we keep going. I think as long as the building is there and as long as it's still owned by the archdiocese, there's hope. Um, as long as I know that they're still using it, you know, for, for religious purposes, there's hope. Um, I hope that one day we'll be able to see the inside of the church, to be able to praise inside the church.